Alrighty, it looks like we're going to get started. We want to wish everyone a good afternoon and thank you for logging on and participating in our live webinar, Taking Care of Your Family, or excuse me, Medicare 101, Getting Started and Signing Up, presented by Stroshine Law Group's certified elder law attorney, Linda Stroshine. My name is Molly and I'm part of the marketing department here at Stroshine Law Group. We are a boutique law firm located in St. Charles. We have four attorneys in our office who can assist in wills, trusts, powers of attorney, long-term care planning, guardianship, and Medicaid applications. We also have a client care advocate on staff who can assist you in getting the help you may need in your home, as well as help in finding the right facility for a loved one. Before we do get started, I would like to review a few items before handing things off to Linda. First off, we are recording this webinar and to ensure that we get a clean recording, your lines have been muted. So that means if you have any questions as you are listening, to please use the Q&A panel in your control bar located at the bottom of your screen. And we will try to do our best to answer as many questions as possible. So to kick things off, we are gonna um, ask you to answer a quick polling question and as you do that, I'm going to hand things off to Linda, but I do want to make everyone aware that Linda had a little bit of an issue trying to um, log in. So we won't be able to see Linda, but we certainly will be able to hear her. So as I... Uh, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Linda is here, but we can't see her face. So um, everyone just um, get started with the uh, polling question. And Linda, it's all you. Excellent. Molly, thank you so much for that very warm welcome. And if you'll just let me know when the poll question is complete. But otherwise, our topic today is Medicare 101, getting started and signing up. And I always start this presentation with a little story about my own, uh, my own family situation. When my mom was uh, nearing the age of 65, she, uh, she started to get all of those um, Medicare supplement information in the mail. And she probably got the Medicare and you booklet as well. And she said to me, she called me up and said to me one day, Linda, do you have any idea what all this is? I can't make heads or tails of it. And I said, you know, I, I don't know, but go ahead, give me a try. So I had her bring it all over. It showed up in a, a big pile of uh, mail and paperwork in a Target bag. So like many of my clients, that's how I get documents. So I tried to sort it out, and I think what I probably sh should have done was sat at my dining room table and kind of spread everything out so I could really get the lay of the land. I didn't do that. I tried to organize it sitting in, um, in the car. We were in a, my husband and I were in a car trip, and ultimately, I, I couldn't make heads or tails of it either. <laughs> at that point, I realized, you know, my mom is not the only one who needs this information. I felt like I needed to learn it more as well, even though I'm, of course, not of Medicare age but um, because my clients were asking questions. And so this program really started out of that situation where my mom and I were really trying to figure out what was best for her and how did we, how did we get the information we need to move forward? So, um, so that's, that's why we're starting today. Molly, Perfect. do we have that uh, poll question? Yes, I'm not sure if you can see the actual results, Linda, I'd be happy to share them with you. Yeah, I cannot, so go ahead. Okay. Well, it looks like about 40% would like to share some of this information that you're going to share with their clients. And then another 40% are just curious about the subject matter. And then we have about 20% that are planning on uh, getting ready and planning ahead. Got it. Perfect. All right. That's really helpful to me because especially in this new age of all these webinars, and in this case, a phone seminar, <laughs> um, it's helpful to me to better understand um, who's in the audience? And like Molly said, if you have any questions, go ahead and pop those in the chat box, or I guess it's a Q&A feature, excuse me. And uh, Molly will monitor those and be able to, uh, to jump in and, um, and I'll answer those as we go along. So feel free to jump in at any point. You don't have to wait till the end of the presentation. So let's move on to slide number two and let's talk a little bit about our agenda for today because we've got several things to cover. We are going to talk a little bit about open enrollment so you have a sense of what's going to happen and when. We're going to talk a little bit about the different parts of Medicare. 
uh, also supplemental insurance, because even though it's not a traditional part of Medicare, supplemental insurance really does make a big impact on your coverage. The enrollment dates and various coverage issues that we see. Um, so we've got a lot to talk about today. All right, let's go on to the next slide. And again, open enrollment, Medicare income taxes, Affordable Care Act. Um, it can be complicated, but I often tell my clients, relax, we're gonna learn this together. It's not that complicated. Um, it just takes a little bit of time to get through. So let's move on to the next slide. Because we do see that healthcare reform has affected Medicare. Now the Obamacare or the um, uh, Affordable Care Act as it's more officially called, you might recall this was signed into law back in March of 2010. Now, even March of 2020 seems like it was forever ago, but add an additional 10 years to that. And we've been working through uh, the changes that the Affordable Care Act has brought. And even though there's been a fair amount of contest to the program over the last couple of years, um, overall, it's still a very good option in being able to, uh, to address our health care needs and the changes that came about because of the Affordable Care Act and how that has affected Medicare. So let's move on to the next slide, how Medicare benefits are changing for 2021. Every year, there are slightly new changes that we need to be aware of when we are looking at um, uh, open enrollment each year. So always a good idea to take a look at your health insurance, to know what is going to be covered, um, not just blindly renew with the same company for the next year, okay? So for example, we look at Medicare Part A, um, the hospital insurance trust fund. At this point, the experts are expecting it may be depleted as soon as 2026, unless Congress acts before then. So this is actually a part of our every day because that, um, that new program that was um, uh, putting a halt on payroll taxes. So for those of us who are working, putting a halt on our payroll taxes means a little bit more in our pockets every week when we get paid. However, that really will have a major impact on both Medicare and Social Security. So we're gonna be hearing a lot more about um, the hospital insurance trust fund and how those benefits will be impacted. So that those short-term gains while we deal with this COVID crisis um, may really impact uh, the long-term longevity of the Medicare program. As before, supplemental plans F and C are no longer available. Um, it was interesting when they made this change, um, this became effective this past year, but um, it's really a, still a part of our program this year. Um, Congress believes that by requiring beneficiaries to pay their Part B deductible, medical overuse will be reduced. And so the idea here is that with, with Parts uh, F and C, or C and F, whatever, um, there was no Part B deductible. And so it was a whole lot easier, even though you paid your premiums every month, it was a whole lot easier and a lot less cash out of pocket to go to the doctor. And the experts are finding a fair amount of medical overuse uh, with these two supplemental plans. So I don't know about you, but I don't necessarily want to go to the doctor any more than I have to. Um, so, but we'll see if that actually comes to fruition. However, if you already have a plan C or a plan F for your Medicare supplement, you can continue to keep that intact. Um, and even if you were qualified for Medicare be, uh, um, prior to this change in 2020, then um, then you can still keep it intact. So for example, as I mentioned, I am not yet of Medicare age, so I will not be able to ever purchase into plan C or F. Um, but those of you who were qualified for Medicare prior to 2020 can still purchase it even if you did not have it at this point. So, but there's some flexibility. It's not as straightforward um, as it sounds that those are no longer available. So if you're interested in it, ask some more questions. Um, again, uh, all beneficiaries who are enrolled in Plan C and F by 12-31-19 are grandfathered in permanently, so that's good. And then as long as you're eligible for Medicare before 2020, you can still sign up for that first dollar coverage, even if after they're discontinued. So again, that Plan C, Plan F is still available. All right, let's go on to the next slide. We've got some Medicare coverage issues we're going to look at. 
And actually, we'll move on to the next one, which is looking at Medicare in review. Now, this is a little bit of a boring slide, but I like it because it really sets out how Medicare compares to a Medicare Advantage plan. This is one of the questions I get more than just about anything else out there. Medicare, traditional Medicare is Medicare Parts A and B. So A covers hospitalization, and for the most part, B covers doctors, tests, things like that. Um, I've got some other great slides here for a minute, so this is just a high-level overview. But then we have, we're going to add on the Medigap or the supplemental policy because we know that Medicare only covers a maximum of 80% of approved charges. So we'd add the Medigap on there. And then we might also add the drug plan on there to make sure we have coverage for our medications as well. So if you are taking the traditional Medicare route, you might have three different uh, insurance cards, one your, your traditional Medicare card, your supplemental card, and your drug plan, and you'll see how on the left side of the slide, those are um, three different programs that combine to make your full coverage. If you are going the route of the Medicare Advantage plan, that's a Medicare Part C, as in CAT, then um, a Medicare Advantage plan really encompasses all of those same things, the traditional Medicare, the supplement, and the drug plan. Some people just find it easier to be in the Medicare Advantage plan, one card, one place for services. Um, and that may or may not be the best thing for you, but again, identifying what those, uh, those main issues are. Let's go on to the card games. As I mentioned, um, we do often, I love the graphic on the slide here, the, the, the Medicare in the, uh, uh, the tomato soup. <laughs> um, it was surprisingly easy to find a graphic that would fit perfectly with the situation because Medicare is often referred to as alphabet soup because there's so many different plan names uh, and coverages that are all identified by a letter. <laughs> and uh, so it's, it's, um, it's easy to get them confused. As we mentioned a minute ago, the main coverage, traditional Medicare, parts A and B, with the Medigap, with the drug plan, that's part D. If you skip that part and go to the Medicare Advantage plans, that's part C. So you might have, again, that Medicare card, supplemental insurance card, and your prescription card all at the same time, okay? Let's dive in a little bit deeper. Medicare part A, again, that covers the hospital. So you'll see the graphic there with the hospital bed making it as easy as possible to remember. Medicare Part A helps to cover inpatient care in hospitals. That includes the critical access hospitals, inpatient rehabilitation facilities, that would be um, inpatient rehab in the hospital. There's a few of those around, and then long-term care hospitals, okay? Medicare Part A also covers hospice services. So again, I get a lot of questions about that. Where's that coverage coming from? It is from Part A. Home health care services uh, are also covered under Part A, and some cost of the skilled nursing facility, but not custodial care and not long-term care. So um, this part of Medicare, uh, Part A will cover a maximum of 100 days um, of skilled care, okay? Let's go on to the next slide. Medicare Part B, the medical insurance. Um, again, you've got the little doctor on there. And so Medicare Part B helps to cover doctor services and outpatient care. Medicare Part B also covers some of those preventative services to maintain health or to keep certain illnesses from getting worse. Medicare Part B, this is where we see the limitation because it's Medicare Part B that only pays a maximum of the 80% of the Medicare approved amount for covered services after your deductible. So this is where we can get into a sticky wicket because if we've got a $100 bill that's been approved by the Medicare program, the Medicare uh, coverage under Part B will only cover a maximum of $80. You're out of pocket then for the remaining 20. Now, if your bill truly is only $100 for you to pick up the $20 uh, copay, or it's not a copay, the $20 remaining amount, that might not be a big deal. But if we've got a $10,000 bill or a much higher bill, then that's when we start to get into uh, a difficult situation. That's where we would have um, a Medicare supplemental insurance program to cover that remaining 20%, okay? 
Let's go on to the next slide there, Medicare Part C. Again, this is a Medicare Advantage plan. They are also called a replacement plan. So similar to the graphics we've seen on the last two pages, Medicare Part C combines both the doctor coverage that we see in Part B, it also combines the hospital coverage that we saw in Part A. So that's why Part C is considered a replacement plan. Okay, are we dizzy yet? <laughs> There's a lot of uh, different parts and different letters here, but again, we're gonna get through it. Um, Medicare Part C is a way to get Medicare benefits through private companies that are approved by and under contract with Medicare. Medicare Part C includes A and B, everything that is in those programs, and it often will cover other benefits that are not covered by Medicare. So that's a nice advantage to the Advantage plans. I guess my pun is intended there, but um, most Part C plans also cover prescription drug coverage. So again, it pulls everything together in one place. Let's go on to the next slide. Medicare Part D is prescription drug coverage. Now, I think they just went on to the next letter in the program. It just so happened that Part D also stands for the drugs. Um, it is an insurance plan, again, that is run by private companies approved by Medicare with that uh, idea, the focus to help cover the cost of prescription drugs and to keep that uh, out of pocket amount a little bit more even keel than it might otherwise be. Of course, each plan is going to vary in cost and coverage. So let's go on to the next slide. The supplemental insurance coverage, again, because original Medicare doesn't cover everything, many insureds also carry a supplemental or a Medigap coverage policy. They are sold by private insurance companies to help bridge that coverage gap. And again, this is where the, met, the uh, alphabet soup comes in here because we've been talking about the main parts of Medicare, parts A, B, C, and D. Now, they couldn't have made it any more confusing because the Medigap policies are supplemental insurance. They have plans A, B, C, D, and so forth, all the way up to, I think it's N. Not all of those plans continue to exist today, um, but for example, a plan A, Medicare supplement, that's a more bare bones policy. It's covering hospital costs and some other out of pocket, but it's not a, it's not a ton of coverage. It's not intended to be. Um, plan G, for example, it does offer more comprehensive coverage, but that does have higher premium costs. So let's go on to the next slide. There's a little bit more about the supplemental policies. And I love this graphic because it really kind of pulls together whether it's the doctor and the diagnosis or the diagnostics rather, the specialist, the rehab, all these different pieces that come into the Medicare system, we have to figure out a way to cover that, those costs. Um, what we know is that nearly 90% of people who are on Medicare have some amount of additional coverage. And that could be in a couple of different ways. 25% um, have Medicare Advantage. 33% have employer or military sponsored coverage, 15% uh, have Medicaid, and 17% have Medigap coverage. So uh, I haven't done that math recently, but I think it gets pretty close to 100 to identify where is that other coverage coming from, okay? Let's go on to the next slide, because if you want a Medigap covered policy, the key is to get it now. Now, not now as in today, September 1st, but it is important to pay attention to that Medigap coverage uh, for the six months after you sign up for Medicare Part B, that those Medigap insurance companies, they must accept you. And they must, during that period of time, they also must cover all pre-existing conditions. So this is what we know as guaranteed issue. If you decide to pick up that Medigap coverage, let's say in month eight, after you pick up part B, then the insurance companies, they can deny you coverage and they can also charge you more for that same coverage. So that's real important to pay attention right around the, um, right around the 65th birthday as we're signing up for all this Medicare stuff, you really need to understand what's your coverage and what choices are you making because that door will close for the guaranteed issue policy. So to the next um, the slide in terms of picking the right letter, um, 
again, among those different Medigap policies, we've got plans A through N as in Nancy, but it excludes E, H, I, and J. And don't worry, there's not going to be a quiz here, but I just wanted to point that out because uh, if you're much like me, I was thinking, well, where's E? <laughs> where's J? And there was definitely some letters missing, and it was just helpful to better understand. Those were policies that originally had been created and then canceled along the way. So they just took those letters out. Um, it's not that significant, but what's really important is that every plan A, for example, will cover the same benefits. So let's go on to the next slide there, because I do love this slide even more. Um, Medicare supplemental insurance plans. Uh, again, this is um, uh, this shows all these different plans. So plan A, you'll see all the way on the right-hand side, it doesn't offer all of those benefits, that all those boxes are not checked, much in the same, in the opposite way, a plan G, most every one of those boxes has coverage in it. So as we said, plan A is kind of like a light version. Plan G has more bells and whistles, okay? So what's important to understand here is that once you figure out, okay, I'm heading for a plan A or a plan N or whatever number, whatever letter you pick, then you can go ahead and shop around because every company that offers a Medicare, a Medigap plan N, for example, they will all have the same exact coverage. So then you can go to Blue Cross Blue Shield, you can go to Humana, you can go to United Healthcare, or whoever offers a Medicare, Medigap plan N, all the plan Ns are the same. Okay, so now we're comparing apples to apples to figure out what's the best cost, okay? Um, so those are just some important things to be aware of. Let's go, on to, let's go on to the next slide where we see some of the changes to Medicare Advantage plans. Some of the cost savings, most of the cost savings that we saw in the Affordable Care Act were in the Medicare program, and we have seen some of these significant changes over the last few years. Those basic Medicare benefits don't change, but the Advantage plans really kind of got the brunt of the cost cutting. Um, Medicare had been paying the Medicare Advantage plans uh, a little bit higher than other plans, and, um, and they ultimately determined that that wasn't the best cost measure for the benefits that were available. Let's go on to the next slide and talk a little bit about, more about the Medicare Advantage plans. Nearly 12 million Medicare beneficiaries get their health insurance from private Medicare Advantage plans. And again, if you like that all-in-one coverage, a Medicare Advantage plan might be right for you. One insurance card to carry in your wallet, one place to pay attention to where your benefits are, one number to call, so less coordination of benefits. And as we look at the question, do we need an advantage? Okay, do we need that Advantage plan? Some of the things that we are told to look at is, first of all, do you have a retiree health insurance plan? Is there benefits available to you from your uh, former employer? Then you, you might not need the Advantage plan. Okay, so talk to your benefits administrator before switching. Number two, are you or your spouse still working and do you have group coverage available? Again, that might be a better alternative if you have something available through work, in which case you don't have to sign up right at your 65th birthday, but you do have to have a plan. Number three, are you in your six-month open enrollment period for Medicare Gap or Medigap, or will you be soon? Again, we, don't, we can push off some of the decisions, but we have to have a plan how we're going to get this coverage because we don't want to miss that guaranteed issue um, it, we absolutely don't want to miss that guaranteed issue. Um, number four is you're looking at an Advantage plan. Might be something that if you are looking for that supplemental coverage, but you can't afford it, or maybe you did miss that window and you were turned down for a Medigap policy, that's when an Advantage plan might be a really good option to consider. And number five, is it important to use the doctors, the drugstores, and the hospitals that you prefer without referrals, without restrictions? Again, an Advantage plan might be a better bet for you if you've answered yes to any of those questions, okay? Let's go on to the next slide and look at that Medicare initial enrollment. Actually, before I do that, Molly, have you seen any questions come through from the audience? I wanna make sure to address those. Nothing as do, of yet, um, Linda. 
Nope, no okay. questions yet. So for anyone on the call, again, if you've got questions, just go ahead and put those in the Q&A box and Molly will get them over to me. In the meantime, um, I love this graphic as well. When is my seven month initial enrollment period? Just kind of fun. So when we look at Medicare initial enrollment, we're looking at the three months before your 65th birthday and the three months after your 65th birthday, plus the month of your birthday. And so that's how we get the seven months. So consider this a birthday gift to yourself. Pay attention to these deadlines, pay attention and make sure you have a plan. Let's go on to the next one, signing up for Part D. So again, this happens right around your 65th birthday. Uh, the sign up period is the same for Part D as it is for Original Medicare, the so three months before or after you turn age 65. With Part D, you also have 63 days from the date your Medicare, your retiree or other coverage ends, okay? So again, if you have retiree coverage, let's say you're going to work to age 66 or 67, <clears throat> excuse me, then you do have an additional 63 days to jump onto the Part D plan without penalty. So just understanding what those deadlines are really makes a huge difference. Um, there is a penalty for not signing up on time with a, uh, with a Part D plan, and that can result in premiums of 32 cents higher. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, and $4 per year, again, not a huge amount, but that goes on for every month you went without coverage. So that's going to add up over time, okay? And again, that penalty, very similar for uh, the Medigap, if you don't sign up on time, you could have a penalty there, and that could be more costly, okay? Let's go on to the next slide. <clears throat> again, that Medigap initial open enrollment. Starting with the date you are covered under Medicare Part B, you have a six month period to sign up for supplemental policy. This is the time when it's a guaranteed right. So in this graphic, a little bit smaller on the page, I can tell that, but you can see the birthday month with the cake there and then it's another five months. So it's important to pay attention to these dates because they really do make a difference. We don't want your rates to increase. We don't want you to be um, canceled from a policy due to a pre-existing condition. All right, let's go on to the next slide. What happens if I don't sign up on time? Um, again, this is for the supplemental policy. We talked about the Medicare Part D, the prescription. That was only a 32 cents per month penalty. This is in the, um, uh, the Medigap coverage, that typical penalty in that 10 to $11 range. And again, that doesn't sound like a lot, but that's an extra $120 a, a year. Multiply that for, um, uh, for however many more years you have that coverage. So it's important to pay attention. Next slide, please. The annual enrollment dates that we need to know. So this is once you're on Medicare and we have this open enrollment period every year. So open enrollment from October 15th through December 7th. This is both for drug and health plan benefits. Once we have that open enrollment that ends on December 7th, coverage will begin on January 1st. Okay, so that just gives um, CMS to, time to get the insurance cards out where they need to be. Um, so that's why they have that cut off on December 7th. Okay, creditable coverage. This is if you already have coverage through an employer, a union or veterans administration, you may wish to delay signing up for your Part D or for your supplemental, um, but you do need to identify if your current coverage is creditable. I know that's a mouthful, but the idea is you need to have proof that your coverage that you're, um, that you're going to be continuing beyond your 65th birthday, if that coverage counts, so that once you do end that creditable coverage, maybe from a retiree plan or once you stop working, that you can pick up Medicare at that point and there won't be any penalty. Um, I did see one of these creditable coverage letters come to my house when I changed from an independent policy to a group policy when I was changing jobs. And I looked at that letter, I'm like, what is that? But it's really important to keep that letter, make sure you don't lose it because you might need to prove that you had that coverage and the time you needed to. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. 
we often get this question, but I'm too healthy for drug coverage. I'm not really taking any prescription drugs, so why do I need to cover, why do I need to uh, sign up for that policy? Uh, again, experts are recommending sign up anyways, because by doing so, you will avoid a hefty fine later on, and you won't be stuck paying for expensive drugs for an unexpected medical issue. There are premium or there are plans that have premiums of only $15 or so per month, so it's worthwhile to look at it. So we can uh, start paying into the system, have that coverage when you need it, and then every year during open enrollment, being able to make some changes. Okay, Medicare in real life. I I find this interesting because there are several different paths for people to get their health care coverage after the age of 65. So we've talked about all of these, but it's nice to kind of put it together in a big picture. Original Medicare and nothing else. Maybe funds are low and that's all you can afford. That's good coverage right there. You could also have a Medicare Advantage plan, or I guess I should say not also a Medicare Advantage, but in lieu of original Medicare, you would have a Medicare Advantage plan because Advantage, again, takes over where Medicare, uh, original Medicare ends. You might have original Medicare plus a supplemental policy to cover that remaining 20% or maybe a drug policy. You could have original Medicare plus your employer or retiree coverage. So those are important things to look at. And then original Medicare and Medicaid for those who really have low income that qualify for that Medicaid coverage. So that's, that's what Medicare looks like in real life. It seems like there are so many options but when you narrow it down and you say, okay, well, I'm not employed right now and I don't have retiree coverage, let's take that off. I have too many assets to qualify for Medicaid, let's take that off. So then we are looking at Medicare Advantage, original Medicare, or with a supplement and drug policy. So it's nice to be able to kind of work your way through those options and say, okay, I've got it, this is good. All right, let's go on to the next slide. It's important to understand the, the free wellness visits and screenings, which are 100% free. Uh, we don't get a lot that's free in our world these days, but Medicare does cover a free, truly free, no copay, no deductible wellness visit every year. So instead of waiting until you're sick to go see the doctor, you can go see the doctor to focus on staying well. That's why it's free, because medical science has realized that we will uh, keep our costs down so much more if we focus on preventative medicine rather than trying to fix something uh, in our health when we have gotten sick. So this new coverage, this um, free wellness visit is part of the federal health care reform that we talked about. And it reflects that thinking that medicine needs to focus more on keeping people well rather than treating them when they become ill. Um, these visits, the free wellness visit every year, may include a discussion about end-of-life care options. And that's not really a fun topic, but it is worthwhile to discuss. It could also talk about um, hospice and palliative care when conditions are life-limiting or terminal. So just being aware that those things are being covered, those topics are being covered. If you've got questions, talk to your doctor about it. Let's go on to the next slide where we've got services that are covered without a coinsurance or deductible. So we've already covered the Welcome to Medicare physical exam. That, um, or I'm sorry, we talked about the annual wellness visit, but there is also a Welcome to Medicare physical exam. So again, nice place to get started. Uh, maybe it's time to reestablish with your current physician. Maybe it's time to get started with a different physician that fits your needs better. Various cancer screenings are also covered without coinsurance or deductible. Heart disease screening, osteoporosis and diabetes, vaccinations. Again, we're hearing so much about those these days. Smoking cessation and medical nutritional therapy. Again, the whole point of this slide is that these things are being covered without coinsurance or deductible because they are, they are preventative trying to keep you well rather than treating you once you're sick. All right, let's go on to the next slide, please. Medication therapy management. So um, one of the programs, one of the proposals within the Affordable Care Act was um, the idea that 
if we can implement medication therapy management, those who have a chronic condition should receive a free annual review of medications, either in person or over the phone. Studies show that seniors are often provide medications that are potentially dangerous, drugs that maybe aren't needed anymore, or drugs with serious side effects or interactions. So just being able to look at proactively the types and kinds of medications you're on so that we can address things before it turns into something more serious. So let's look at the next slide, projected change in Medicare enrollment. So I thought this was kind of interesting. How does the Medicare program, how is that going to change over the next so many years? Now, obviously we're in 2020, so we're already partway through this graphic, but it continues to show that, well, in 2020, our coverage is about 64 million people, and that's going to continue to increase almost by a third. So 92, per, 92 million people will be on Medicare by the year 2050. So it, it's crazy how much uh, Medicare is going to be used going forward. Um, often due to those baby boomers who are aging, and we keep hearing about them, um, the Medicare program really is going to have to change since the average couple would have paid $114,000 into the Medicare system, but would receive $355,000 worth of benefits. So even if we didn't see the population growth, knowing that the average couple pays in $114,000 and receives nearly three times those benefits, we know that this program cannot be sustained at its current level without, uh, with such that vast increase of beneficiaries and fewer individuals play, paying into the system behind them. So we're going to see more changes. You know, when things changed in 2010, as they've been tweaked over the last handful of years, we think, oh, well, maybe there won't be changes this year. They're coming. There's more changes coming. I'm sure of it. Let's go on to the next slide, please, because we need to look at and prepare for the annual cost. Um, Linda, this slide shows that the, Oh, sure. Do we have a question? We do have a question come in, and it says, can you review the network on the Advantage plans versus the Medicare supplement and allow you to go any to any doctor or hospital in the U.S.? And it goes on to say the Advantage Plan Network can change at any time. So folks need to be comfortable with the possibility. Yes, I, and I do think that's really important. And that's why we, that's why we host these webinars um, every fall before open enrollment starts, because we do know it's not just the Medicare Advantage, although they do seem to, to change more frequently than others. It's your drug coverage, it's your supplemental coverage that you need to look at your plan at each and every year to make sure it still does what you want it to do. Because you might have been in this one health insurance plan for the last five years, seven years or so, everything's been fine. But if the insurance company is planning to make a change to that policy, you really wanna know about it ahead of time because otherwise you are going to sign up for that same policy and you're going to then be stuck with those changes. They might take your doctor off the list. They might take your favorite pharmacy off the list. And now you have to go way across town and that just doesn't make any more sense. So again, that's where um, on our current slide where we look at how do we prepare for those annual costs? Um, it's not just, you know, it's not just the, the cost of the prescription drugs. There's so much more to it. And, um, and this slide shows the share of average total household spending on health related expenses. So for those who, um, that, that's twice as large, those expenses are twice as large for Medicare households than for non-Medicare households. So it's important to be aware of, you know, what your costs are going to be and try to plan as best we can. All right, let's move on to the next slide. What's not included, okay? Medicare does not include long-term care costs beyond 100 days. So what does that mean? As a Medicare beneficiary, if you, uh, if you have a stroke, if you trip and fall, if there's some reason you go to the emergency room, eventually you're admitted to the hospital and you're there for a three overnight stay, then when you go to the skilled nursing facility for rehabilitation, you do have a maximum of 100 days of coverage. And we're gonna talk about this more in just a few minutes. But Medicare does not cover beyond that 100 days of coverage. 
Medicare, and it makes sense why. But, you know, many of my clients, oh, but that seems too short. We need more. But it does make sense why. Medicare is health insurance, right? Medicare pays when you're getting better. If you fall and break your arm, your insurance company is going to cover for um, a cast and an x-ray and physical therapy and all that. But it's not going to pay for other things unrelated to that. So Medicare pays for long-term care in a nursing facility, but it doesn't ever extend beyond 100 days because at that point, Medicare system says, this is now your new normal. This is not you getting better, okay? Improvement can still come, but it's not, uh, it's, it's not on their radar. Medicare also does not cover the routine physical exams beyond that uh, welcome to Medicare and then the annual wellness exam. But just recognize that there are differences between the annual wellness exam and a physical exam. So again, ask your doctor what are the differences so you know what you're getting and if you, what kind of uh, appointment you need to schedule. Routine dental or vision care is not included. Of course, cosmetic surgery, acupuncture, and hearing aids are also not included under Medicare. So we bring these up because these costs do need to be factored into your budget for medical expenses. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Quick comment, Linda. Because there are, okay, oh, go ahead. We just had a quick comment that said, with Medicare supplements, Passing health questions may prohibit change, therefore important to pick a company with strong history of low and stable rate increases. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Um, there might be newer players in the industry, uh, but if they can't, you know, if they can't be that stable uh, guidance that you need, um, you might want to look elsewhere. Okay. So the coverage issues that we see that are so important. Um, is, uh, is an issue with regard to either inpatient or observation status at the hospital, and then also with regard to the improvement standard, or really rather the fictional improvement standard at the nursing home. So let's go on to the next slide so I can tell you a little bit about the 100 days, the 100 day rule we've just briefly talked about. So in 2020, Medicare Part A will cover um, the first 20 days, there is no copayment. There's no cost to the patient for that Medicare covered rehab. Again, this is following the hospital stay, at least a minimum of three overnight. Now that three midnight rule was, uh, was put on hiatus during the COVID pandemic. I haven't seen any anticipated changes to that, but I would imagine we'll see that sometime in 2021. So even if you're at the hospital, fully admitted for a day, you might still be able to get skilled nursing care because that three-day requirement was waived. Anyway, so when you're in the nursing home, those first 20 days paid 100% by Medicare. That's why the, car, the cost to you is $0 per day. From days 21 through 100, the individual would pay a, a copay of $176 per day. Now that $176 is often covered by your supplemental health insurance, okay? So again, that Blue Cross Blue Shield plan uh, often will pick up that $176 per day. And then after day 100, again, you pay everything because Medicare only pays up to day 100. So it makes sense to be aware of where you are in that process. If you are in the skilled nursing facility, get the details from the facility, how many Medicare days specifically did I use or did my loved one use? It's also important to note there's a new benefit period that begins when you have not received any hospital or skilled care in the skilled nursing facility for 60 days in a row. That's a new benefit period, okay? All right, some changes we've seen to the nursing home uh, payments from Medicare. Um, we are absolutely seeing this. Um, this is actually a copy of the slide I started uh, presenting on 10 years ago when the Affordable Care Act was implemented. And I have to admit, I saw this in my research, but I didn't really know how this was going to be impacted. But we do know the Affordable Care Act cut out some Medicare payments to nursing homes um, through um, uh, just through cutting some of these programs. When families come in to me and say, I know I have 100 days of coverage, but the facility is telling me that I can't get coverage beyond 20 days, that I've really ex exhausted all my coverage. 
that's where these changes have come into play. And it is very frustrating because we, we know the 100-day rule is still on the books, but we still have some issues and we, we really have to advocate strongly for those benefits. So um, let's go on to the next slide, changes to the hospital 30-day readmission. So Quick question, this is Linda, important sorry to, to interrupt. Yeah, go ahead. No, I want to get this in there while we're on topic. So yep. if I have insurance through my husband, does that insurance become my Medicare Part B or my Medigap insurance when I sign up for Medi Medicare Part A? Do I still need Medicare Part B? Well, that's where you're going to want to talk to someone, uh, probably go back to um, your husband's employer, the HR department, to see what coverages are available for you. Um, and then you might also want to go see uh, someone who focuses in Medicare coverage because you can then evaluate what type of benefits are you seeing from uh, your current coverage that your husband offers you and then, or your husband's employer, and then what can you do on your own? Maybe it would make more sense to have better coverage or different coverage. Um, so just be aware of all that. And if you need to, to talk to somebody, we've got a couple of folks that we, we work with and we can provide you with some name and contact information. Okay. Molly, anything else before we go on? That is it for now. Thanks, Linda. Okay. So um, we, we have seen some changes to the hospital 30-day readmission. Um, basically what this means is when you go to the hospital and you, you go in through the emergency room as a Medicare patient or Medicare beneficiary, and let's say they move you up to um, a room in the hospital and uh, later in the day from your, from your emergency room visit and you think, oh, I've been admitted to the hospital. You really have to ask the question, have I been admitted to this hospital? And it kind of sounds like a stupid question, frankly, but you could be there in the hospital under what's called observation status, and that really impacts um, how you get coverage in the skilled nursing facility, okay? If you've been in the hospital as a fully admitted patient for at least a three overnight rule, uh, absent COVID, then you go to the nursing home, you get that skilled coverage, okay? Um, if you have not been admitted under, uh, you know, full admission, if you're there under observation status, this is where the issues start to come up. We do see this 30-day um, this readmission issue because the whole reason this came up, this observation status came up, is because the hospitals were getting penalized. Medicare said to the hospital, hey, why are we paying you? You, you treated this patient, they came in to see you, you treated them, you sent them home. And within 30 days, they came back for almost the same exact reason. And Medicare said to the hospitals, why are we going to pay you again if you didn't do the job right the first time? So Medicare started to implement a penalty to the hospitals when a client was admitted within 30 days. This often has to do with um, heart-related issues. Um, either a heart attack or heart failure. Pneumonia is often a top uh, readmission issue. Um, total hip and knee replacements. And then um, basically the hospital is just trying to address how do we, how do we avoid that penalty for those 30 day readmissions? Okay, Molly, let's go on to the next slide, please. And again, getting back to the Medicare uh, open enrollment, we need to look at our policies every year. We need to take that annual review. Only 30% of us or so actually review our plans every year. So I've got uh, six different reasons why. Number one, your health, your budget, or your address may have changed in the last year. All of those things can impact the coverage and the price of your coverage. Okay, so you need to know about that before you sign up for another year. Number two, your current Advantage plan, drug coverage, or your original Medicare might not be working as well as you had hoped. If that's the case, time for the annual review. Let's take a look at it and make it better for next year. 2021 has to be a better year than 2020, right? <laughs> Number three, your current plan may be reducing benefits, increasing costs, or even dropping drugs that you take from its formulary next year. So again, you could have been on this plan for years and it's been working great, but if they are planning on reducing benefits or increasing your costs, you're gonna to wanna to know that before you sign on the dotted line. 
September 4, your plan might not be offered in your area next year. Again, that's important to know before you sign up. Number five, your doctor, your specialist, or your preferred hospital might not be in your plan any longer. Or number six, the good, another good reason for an annual review, you might want to just be sure that you've got the best plan for you. So that's why we're looking at this. Let's take a good look. Let's go on to the next slide. How do we figure this all out? Well, we certainly start with the Medicare.gov website. Yeah, Medicare is complicated, but if you can get your taxes filed every year, well, Medicare isn't that much harder. If you've got questions, there's some resources that can help. Let's go on to the next slide. So let's look at some very specific steps that we can take because with so many options, it's easy to evaluate them and make good choices. So here are a few simple steps. Number one, gather your tools. Gather up all your current year medical bills, your current prescriptions, grab a pencil, a pa some paper, and a calculator. Of course, computer access is very helpful too, but it's not required. Number two, add up all your medical expenses for the year, including your premiums, your drugs, your co-pays and all that. Figure out what you were paying this past year. Was it more or less than what you expected? And then finally, consider your expected health care needs for next year. If you've got a new diagnosis, you might need to factor that in to your overall plan. A few more specific steps to take on the next slide. I love this site, Center for Medicare Advocacy. They are not with the Medicare, um, with the government. Um, it is a private organization. That's why it's .org, not .gov. And they've got some great information. Uh, it's not, um, again, it's not a government organization. The SHIP, uh, <clears throat> I always have to uh, make sure I pronounce that properly, Senior Health Insurance Program with a P. Um, great information there specific to Illinois. Um, and then the, also the Illinois Department on Aging. And then um, let's see, let's go on to the next slide because we are gonna get to the questions. If there are any additional questions uh, that have come in, I'd be happy to answer them. Just a quick comment, Linda. This is a great um, presentation. We've had such great questions and comments. Um, we have a comment that says, once you are on group retiree benefits, you need to be very careful about changing to an individual plan. Many times, group advantage plans have lower out-of-pocket expenses. In addition, once you leave the group, most times you're not allowed to go back. That, you know what, that's an important uh, thing to mention, and I'm glad that uh, whoever uh, added that to our discussion. Again, being aware of what your coverage is and when it changes, how that's going to impact your out-of-pocket uh, because those plans are very different. So you want to know about that ahead of time. Absolutely. Is there anything else that we need to cover, Molly? Um, looks like one more question. It says, is open enrollment for Medicare supplement, wait, let me read that one more time. Is open enrollment for my Medicare supplement or only for Advantage and drug plans? Uh, open enrollment is for all of those different pieces, yes. Perfect. Okay. So as we know that um, when it comes right down to it, what we're talking about is protecting what matters. Learning more about the Medicare program really does protect what matters because then you're confident that you have the information you need to make the best health insurance decision for you. So we do have a whole series on Medicare this month. And uh, Molly, I'm gonna turn it back to you for some closing remarks. And I don't know if you've got the dates or topics for our next programs, but um, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Thank you yes, so much for having me today. For sure. This is such a great presentation, Linda, and so much information. And we've had such great questions and comments. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank everyone for joining us. And we'd like to encourage everyone, like Linda said, to um, continue with us in our uh, September series. Our next presentation will be on September 15th. The title of the presentation is called Medicare Coverage Issues, Observation Status, and the Improvement Standard. So by joining us, we just ask that you go to stroshinelawgroup.com, click on the events tab, and you can register there. So on behalf of myself and Linda and Vicki, who runs the show in the back, we thank everyone for joining us today. And as, um, as a follow-up, I had a few questions regarding um, getting a copy of the um, presentation along with the recording. You will absolutely get that. And um, we thank you again for joining us.